Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Quest for Gaia. It is by uh, Joshua Fry and Open Door Games, currently on Kickstarter right now. In the game Quest for Gaia, it is a basic 4X game with a little bit of area control in which you're trying to exterminate and expand and um, explore and all that good stuff. You're going to be playing as a race, which you get to create yourself. In fact, the game is going to come with a specific booklet, ah, there we go, that will allow you to uh, create your own. They've also provided their own ones that you can go ahead and choose from if you'd like, but it's kind of nice to create your own as well. And there's a lot of different choices in this book that let you create your own race, and uh, that'll give you a bunch of different passive and active abilities throughout the game. It's also going to have a board, which is going to have your planets on them, and you're going to be able to move, and there's actions, minor actions, and major actions, in which you're going to be able to take in the game. Not only that, but there's a political phase in which you're going to be voting on different players, and it's going to determine how the round ends and how players get points and then of course you're gonna have to allocate resources in this game as well if you have planets that need resources and whatnot you're gonna have to supply those people to keep the planet afloat and there's monsters there's space monsters like this little guy right here float around in space they're gonna try to attack you and attack your allies some of them are good and some of them are bad and you kind of want to determine how you want to place them and when you want to place them uh, and if you do you can defeat them and you can score victory points there's tons of ways to score victory points in quest for Gaia whether it be stuff like uh, attack and a, mon a monster or an opponent or upgrading your tech tree there are many different ways you can do that but once you get to a certain point whether it be 14 22 or 30 points you will win the game at the end of the round and there's of course some tiebreakers and whatnot that's the basic idea for quest for Gaia floating around space destroying monsters searching for the ever omnificent Gaia which is of course lost in the stars that you can actually find in the game which I will show you down below so here is the game Quest for Gaia and everything that's going to be included in the game, at least as far as I know. Uh, you're going to get this little booklet here, which is going to be for your race. And then, of course, you're going to get your uh, rule booklet. And in this little booklet here for creating things, you can go ahead and choose. It tells you you get five points. You can basically draw a picture, which I went ahead and did, along with uh, three others that we were playing with. I utilize this guy quite a few times. This is the Thermox. He has four different abilities and you get five points. And the abilities are going to cost points or give you points depending on if they're positive or negative and there is a ton of different actions or uh, passive abilities in this booklet whether it gives you uh, bonus credits or less credits or gives you a uh, political affiliation that tells you how to play the game very very simple how to create your own character but definitely gives you a lot of additional stuff you can do in the game uh, not only that but they also give you certain classes that you can go ahead and play with like the uh, Joe 2 the Lokesh or the humans those are some options that you can just go ahead and take to play uh, once you've gone ahead and made your own character or chosen one of the uh, pre-rendered ones they've made for you. You're going to get a player board, which is basically just a color of your choice. Right now we have blue, uh, white, and green here. You're going to have two carriers. You're going to get all the blue cubes or, or uh, fighter ships. There are the three different resource types, whether it be metal, whether it be uh, speed, I guess, and then, of course, food. And uh, not only that, but you're going to put your cubes on your government. Maybe it's a monarchy. Maybe it's a... Maybe it is a maybe it's communistic or maybe it's an anarchism style government. You get to choose that when making your character or selecting one. Play a cube there. You're gonna get a, a two minor actions, which you can just go ahead and put on the board there. It goes from one to eight, and you'll get a major action. That is this big boy right here. You're going to start with three credits, which is money here. You're gonna get start with these political cards that'll be a one, a three, and a five here that you can go ahead and utilize uh, throughout the game basically. And then in addition, you're also going to get get two boards of your color and a home world. That's pretty much where you're going to get in the game to start with. But remember, every single character or class is going to change in certain ways. Whether you have business acumen that will give you plus two credits for each upkeep, or maybe you're just simply wealthy, you start the game with three additional credits. Those are the basic ones, but there's a ton of them that can change how the game works. And also, the boards over here are going to be set up in turn order. Before we get to that, we're going to actually take this political deck and set it up. There's three question marks, and then they're going to add two of these single player cards for each color to the deck based on the number of players. In this case, we're going to have six cards because we have three characters, three players playing. We're going to shuffle this up randomly, and then we're going to place them out on the side of this board here, equaling one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that will be the people who can vote next round. 
and how many votes they get. So in this case, only people get to vote are green and white, and they each get two votes. So the question marks are basically no votes. So it can change, and that's going to determine the first player as well as victory points. And then, of course, getting to select these cards, the discovery cards, which will also shuffle up and deal out over here. It's based on the number of players. And uh, they have different things that happen in the game, but basically at the end of the round, you can go ahead and utilize those. This deck here is going to be shuffled as well, but it's only going to include the cards of the colors of the player that are players that are currently playing the game. And then you're going to go ahead and set it there. Every player that's playing the game will take a cube as well and place it on zero. This is the starting victory points you will have at the game. And then they're going to go ahead and take this main space here, this, this, this world space here. This is where Gaia is going to be found once you're able to uh, find it, of course. Players are going to place in a turn order. Uh, their first one is their little celestial uh, tile, which is going to have the little uh, Milky Way symbol looking thing. And you place it adjacent to this main space here. Follow the rules as best as you can until you can't, then you don't have to, basically. Uh, with, let's say, green did this, and then white did this, and then, of course, blue did this. And then in turn order, you have to place your secondary one uh, attached to your other one. And... Uh, Everyone will do that as well. Now, of course, there's also rule breakers like the humans here. They're scattered, so they actually can't place next to each other, which is maybe good, maybe bad. I guess it depends on how you look at things. But then after that, you're going to go ahead and take your planets and in turn order, place them down on that second space that you've created, that second board. You can put it anywhere you want, provided that it is not adjacent to another player's planet. So for instance, white could not place here if he was the last player, since blue had already previously played here. Oh, he could play here or he could play here. And that is pretty much the setup for the game. Uh, once you go ahead and get everything set up, you're ready to begin, which I will show you how to play a couple rounds and what all the different things you can do in the game are down below right now. So here we have Quest for Guy. Instead of showing you a full on playthrough, which we'd need a much, much more cameras and whatnot, we will I'll show you what you can do on your turn and how you can use minor actions and major actions, and then how they are all going to function on this board over here, and of course the economy and political board over here. But the, before we do all that, the first phase is the upkeep, in which you're going to allocate tokens, as well as gaining credits and whatnot. Certain players will just get credits, like for instance, this one here uh, is going to gain plus two credits. And I have them over here, just gonna gain that. And other ones will do other things as well. Uh, this player here, just he just simply starts with three credits, right? Uh, not only that, but you're going to allocate these here. Uh, so if they start off here, and then you can choose to utilize them however you want. Sometimes you're going to utilize them on planets, other times you're gonna utilize them on the cards, and sometimes you might just wanna save them uh, off to the side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them over here. This will actually give me bonuses. Now, remember, you can only have plus three to this one here and this one here, but this one you can have more than plus three. This is the supply. This is how many ships you can have, plus four for every single one of these you allocate every turn. This is how many ships you can build with a max of three. You get one fighter to start with every time you use the build action, and then you get plus one ship for every one of these bars you have, or if you have two, you can select a carrier instead. This is a movement, and you can simply move for plus one, and for every one of these you have, you get an additional movement. Upgrading will let you flip your planets over and upgrade them, and attacking is also something you can do. But that is basically how you're going to start with just the upkeep phase, collecting credits, as well as these guys over here, which are crystals. These things are actually going to be worth four uh, credits if you want to turn them in for a crystal, and they can give you a wild, basically, for these types of supply tokens at the end of the round or during a round. So pretty useful, right? After the upkeep, keep everybody does this at the same time then we'll go into the politics phase over here is the politics area in which i showed you we shuffled them out and dealt out seven and players are then going to vote on the player who uh, wants to go first well, right now white and green are the two people who can vote blue unfortunately is not here that means there's probably two blue ones here just to show you and they're going to vote so maybe white goes i'd like to go first and green says okay i'll give you my two votes if that's the case white will simply go first and the first player will get to take the first action. We'll also get two victory points for going first, but we'll not get to select the first one of these discovery cards. In fact, it's going to select it last in turn order, meaning the player who's last, which if this was clockwise, it would be blue, then green, and then white would get to select these cards in that order. So there is benefits and negatives to going first. After the political phase is done, then we're gonna go ahead and go to player turns. Players are going to get to do one action on their turn, whether it be a minor action or a major action. A minor action are all located here, attacking, upgrading, moving, and building. The major actions are actually located on this board over here. 
For instance, if I wanted to explore, I would simply be able to go and uh, there's a bag. Let me go ahead and find it here. Where is it? There's a bag of planets. Ah, here we go. And you're going to go ahead in this bag, shuffle it up, mix it up, pull out to pick one and then place it on the board. Now let's say that the green player chose to do this action. Well, he could place this planet on the one side because the two is the upgraded side and it has to be one space away from his or her planet following the rule that um, it is not adjacent to any other planet, just like setup would be. For instance, it would be like that. Now let's say that there was actually two planets already here and uh, maybe a planet over here and just like that. In this case, uh, if this was not his and these were maybe, he would not be, he could play anywhere he wanted because now the rule has been broken to the point where he literally cannot chain, he cannot actually follow the rule, which is by placing it one away, in which case you can go ahead and place it where you want. So that's basically how discovery works. And on these planets, they're going to either have a cost associated to their upkeep to give you a benefit, or they're going to have no cost to give you a benefit provided you have a unit on them. Researching is going to follow these tracks here. You have a bunch of different tracks and based on the ones you choose are going to give you passive and active abilities. If he played on um, the research, he could simply spend his credits. It'll be either two for the first tree, four for the second and six for the third and place uh, his cu cubes on these spaces here. If he chose offense, he'd have to pay two. And when choosing the research action, you can research twice. You can upgrade twice. So he could spend two for this. And if he wanted, he could spend four more for this here. That would give him this one and this one for the rest of the game. If he gets all the way to the end here, he will score victory points of three points. Uh, and in addition, he would get to get all these abilities here. They all do different things in offense. And for offense, of course, it's going to be based on combat. So research can be fairly useful in the game. Over here is campaigning. Campaigning is cool because you have these little campaign cards here. The first time you campaign, you'll put your one in here, which gives you an additional vote randomly when it gets shuffled. If he campaigned again the next round or the next, yeah, the next round of the game, he could put the three in and then finally the five, giving him tons of votes and tons of control over who gets to go first, second, and of course, third. This action over here is espionage. You can do two things with espionage. The first thing you can do is simply destroy any one ship anywhere on the board. Well, that might not seem very powerful. Let's say we had a planet available. Let's go ahead and pick one of these guys up here and place it here. And there is just one guy here and Green's like, oh, his next ships are all over here. So if I espionage him, I would simply remove this from the game. Thusly, he loses control of that planet. Pretty sneaky, right? Not only that, but if he wanted to, he could espionage. And let's say they had a ship over here, maybe a carrier as well. And, um, he, and he was next to these planets. If, for instance, we had blue and blue was all the way up on this offense, he could spend that espionage action and then he could spend based on the track they're in to gain uh, on their track. So he could spend two credits. So these guys right here will spend these two credits here. And then he can go ahead and also put one of his cubes on this track here. Now he can't simply buy this one here, but he can buy this one here. And on the next espionage action, he can do this and this, so on and so forth. But he has to be adjacent with his carrier and or his fighters next to an uh, enemy uh, planet. So that's kind of how espionage works. Market. Market is this little place over here and it'll allow you to place one of these little guys, food, metal, or these little health symbols here. And during the upkeep, you won't get this, but you'll get currency, whether it be two or one, because if somebody else does market, they could place theirs here and bump a player off. And thusly, if another player does it, it'll bump a player back and make him lose that supply back to his, his board area where he can place it next round. So market can give you bonus credits during each round. The Covenant space. This space, you'll normally draw two cards. You'll choose one or two of them and play them. If it's your color, you can play it on any player. And if it is their, another player's color, you have to play it on them. They'll give you victory points and they'll have certain requirements for you. Finally, Revolting. You can change your government affiliation uh, by playing this card. There's quite a few of them and they're actually pretty useful depending on what you want to play with them. Those are all the main actions that you can take in the game for the main supply. Now, if we go over here, we'll look at attacking now. So for instance, if I used my, let's put this guy back. Let's say we just used one of our minor actions and we had two guys over here and we had uh, three guys over here. Let's say we want to attack. Well, first of all, the player who has more ships wins and does two damage. The player who has least ships does one damage. Then player who wins gets one point on the victory track. Pretty simple, right? Uh, and the same would follow on a planet as well. And when attacking a planet, let's say there's just one here, 
This player has to be on the space as the planet. They can attack doing two damage to this guy. He does one to them. Now this player controls that planet. Now, you can never control a home planet though. You have to, you can, but you can control any other planet on the board like this guy here. So in general, you're just gonna gain the victory point for fighting off a green player's uh, fighters on their main planet. But as an example, that's how fighting with any other planet works. Uh, moving over to here is upgrade. You can go ahead and spend three resources if you want for a final, maybe his final action there. And he's going to go ahead and flip this guy over. And then it'll give him bonus minor actions as well as bonus um, materials throughout the game. So that's pretty useful. Uh, you can also go ahead and move if you wanted to by spending a minor action. And that would let you move based on your number one plus the number of these guys you have. In this case, it would just be one. And finally, fighters, which I explained how those guys kind of work. And uh, that's pretty much all the actions you can take in the game. Now, of course, you can buy certain things. So, for instance, you can buy a surplus of crystals. You can flip over one of these guys. You can buy these tech trees. That's how you use money. And crystals are basically going to count as wilds for these, like I explained. But uh, that's pretty much the idea. If you go up on this track here, depending on if it's a short, medium, or long game, or epic game, they call it, then uh, the player who gets there at the end of the round, it'll trigger an ending, and the player who has the most points is the winner. And that's the basic aspect for playing this game. A couple of really cool little notes to take part in is... It, at the end of every at the end of every round, uh, players are going to check to see if they hit, are on these spaces, and if they are, they'll get bonuses on this track here. And based on the number of players, so if it's a three-player game and he has three of these, Gaia will awaken, but just for that player, meaning that player can go on that planet as long as he's got these three spaces covered. So let's say he go went ahead and got his, he got whites, and he got blues. This will open for him, but nobody else can find Gaia unless they're on the unless they find these spaces and stay on them at the end of a round. There are certain, you know, different things that can change that, such as Cartographer, which will allow you to instantly recognize these installations. But for the most part, if he had this at the end of a round, he would get these three bonuses. Plus, on the next turn, he could simply move these guys onto Gaia, provided he used the movement action. And that is going to give him a bonus uh, major action, which is pretty useful. In addition to a bonus crystal, every round he controls Gaia until somebody else discovers these as well, and then they can actually partake in fighting over for Gaia, because Gaia is very, very, very good. Um, and that is pretty much how to play the game. I don't think there's much else to say other than I'll talk about some cards like this up, up above, maybe some of these, and then the fact that these are all bonuses that you can get from the discovery phase. The last part is the end phase in which you're just going to have to draft these guys out from the last player to the first player, checking your supply to make sure that you have the equivalent amount of fighters. So in this case, if he had five fighters on his home, but he only had um, one of these guys, he'd have to lose a fighter. And then um, checking fighters to make sure that they're not more than two spaces away from your planet. So in this case, if the round ended, this is two spaces, so he's okay, but this is three, so he'd lose that. Then, of course, the upkeep will come back again, and you're going to go through the rounds again and play the game up until the point where somebody hits those goals there. Anyway, let's come up now and talk about uh, Quest for Gaia and uh, then what I think about it. All right, so a couple of caveats down before we get into my review. The first thing is when you discover, you, you take out two of these planets here, you choose one, place it down, following the planet placement rules, discard the other one out of the bag because that one can be used for terraforming, which is in the tech tree. Uh, another thing is uh, when you're doing espionage, it doesn't cost any money to steal somebody else's tech. And by steal, I just mean simply uh, gain that tech and it has to just follow the rules of placement for as far as the tech trees go. And um, then you have these guys here. Uh, and these ones are basically these, these are called the, es not the espionage, sorry. These ones are called the uh, covenant cards here. And they're going to be basically missions. So they can be played instantly, provided there's certain rules on them. But otherwise, if you don't play them by the time your next action comes up and you chose to keep them, you're going to go into anarchy, which is bad. You get minus one action as your, if your government is anarch or anarchical, or whatever you want to call it. And then finally, these world discovery cards here. There are red ones in here. And those red ones are actually little miniatures that uh, will be popping out on the board. When somebody takes that card, they will give that card to the player on their left. And then that player will place that specific uh, monster on the player's tile, or the, the, the let's go ahead and show you. On So if the blue player took the red card, the blue player is going to give it to the white player on the player on his left. And then that white player can play it on any blue tile in the area, okay? 
And that is basically how those guys work. Some of them are beneficial, some of them hurt you. It really just depends. You have to really determine whether you want to go first or not. Then you've got things like commanders that will just simply stay in play for you. And then you've got things that you slide underneath planets that give you bonuses. So that, that kind of stuff. There's quite a lot of things here. Um, and I think that's pretty much it that I want to talk about. Oh, one last little thing, I guess. The campaign. Once you've put all your campaign cards in, which is three, you've got the, I think it's a one, three, and a five. If you play it again, you'll simply take somebody else's vote out. So... It's really powerful, right? Um, but let me, t let me tell you now. Okay. A lot of cool stuff going on. This game has a lot going for it. It's a really... Uh, it's not a super thick, but it's pretty thick 4X style game. Being able to make your own characters is super cool. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that part of the game. That was actually one of my favorite parts of the game is being able to make my character and then use those abilities in the game. My guy has had business acumen, which means that I get bonus points, but I'm also poor, so I start with... So I start with... I get bonus currency every round, but I'm poor as well, so I start with no money. Cartographers allow me to simply go to these installations spaces and instantly uh, gain the bonuses for it and then eventually find Gaia and then of course I have artifacts which allows me to pick another government um, so I was another uh, another tech or whatever you want to call it so I was construction and biology and uh, those other ones like Grant's character he played with it's called the Cephalonauticalus Polexentar yes that's that's what he named his and he was wasteful and unnatural so he had no supply for his ships, which is, is excellent, which means you don't have to worry about supply. But wasteful means that everything is going to cost one more credit. And then, of course, he has his artifacts, which lets him give another bonus, and, and so on and so forth. There's more of those. But really cool. I love that aspect in the game. There's two ports, portions of the game, right? You have the basically the political major actions portion, and then you have the board, which is going to be basically minor actions and then area control and movement and discovery. A lot going on as far as that goes. You have to just add all the stuff on your board as well as on the tech tree and then input it into the game here. Now it's somewhat aggressive and it's also somewhat political. You want to work together with each other because there's a lot of those political cards that you can actually go into tre treaties with people. Now of course treaties are kind of one-sided. Grant, I'll be in a treaty with you. Provided you never, provided the moment you attack me, I'm going to have to, I can discard this and fight you again, but I can't fight you unless I go into anarchy, which you never really want to do. So there is those political aspects. And not only that, but like one of the greatest functions in the game too is the way the political cards function. Because the more votes you have, the more control you have over going first or last, which is very, very important because those discovery cards are amazing. And also going first gives you two victory points. And in a 30 point game, maybe that's not as strong, but in a 14 point game, that's pretty good as well. And controlling the supply. If you place them on your on your planets, you might not have enough to supply for your troops and vice versa. You have to determine what's best for you. Overall, this game is really fun. Gaia popping out is a very, very useful planet, giving you crystals as well as giving you an additional action. Additional actions in this game are excellent, but the cost of other players noticing you have those and having to fight you. The quality of the components is great. I'm very excited to see what the game's going to look like when it's fully done. Uh, right now, I see that's almost handmade, but they went and put a lot of time and effort into this game, so I imagine there's going to be a lot of time and effort put into the production value of this game. This is a solid game. I would definitely pick up this game. I, I think that everybody at the table, for the, for the most part, other than just certain small things, I think one of the critiques was they wanted to even do more actions, so maybe two additions, two two total major actions as opposed to just one and allowing additional space on the board because once a major action is taken, you cannot place there until the next round. So basically, if somebody puts uh, their, their major action on Explore, no one that round can place on Explore. There, of course, are exceptions, though. But maybe having two spaces there or giving additional major actions would be cool. But uh, for me, I, I really just enjoyed this game all around. It was a lot of fun, and it's one of the games I've actually had to create my own character. It was really quick and fun, and kind of gave me a nice little breather between another game I was playing before jumping into this big one here. It's also thick and strategical, so those players who are looking for more of a family-oriented game, this is not going to be for you, in my opinion. This is going to be more for those deep thinkers, a lot of strategy, not a lot of luck other than the discovery cards, but even that is based on the politics of the game, so even that I count, the, the luck is just negating it out. It's all strategy in this thick, strong, fun little 4X area control game. Definitely take a look at Quest for Gaia, currently up on Kickstarter down below in the description. I highly recommend it. All right, guys, thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board gamer review. If you like this video, go check the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and all those help we do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out Quest for Gaia, a really cool little 4X game. I was really, really impressed with this one. I wasn't sure what to expect with it with all the crazy components and pieces and whatnot. 
but I had a lot of fun with it. I love the monsters. That was that was really cool too. A lot of little interesting little aspects I did not I've never played in a 4X game that this one has, the political aspect of it, in which you have the boats and then the monsters and creating your own character are just three of my really favorite aspects of this game. Don't forget to check our website out, unfilteredgamer.com, terms of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more giving away Wingspan right now with the giveaway geek and uh everythingboardgames.com and I think Blake Leafly. So do go ahead and check that out. And of course, check out the sites, unfilteredgamer.com and everythingboardgames.com and thegiveawaygeek.com. Tons of giveaways as well, even more than my own site. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to questing for Gaia with you next time.